What television series had the biggest bullshit finale? There was a once pretty famous Spanish TV sitcom called Los Serrano about a Spanish family and it ran for five years. They basically turned the plot into a shit show with the wife of the protagonist dying, two of his children involved in incest and the other ending up in juvie. Pretty dark stuff for a comical sitcom. In the final episode, the father went to end his life and when he does it, he just wakes up as if nothing happened, nothing as in the actual whole eight seasons. It was just a dream. That's the ending. The guy waking up at the start of the series to a normal fucking family, which was also extremely weird because his children were obviously grown up, but were put in kids' clothing and hairstyles and acted like kids. To this day, this is still referenced in Spain as a meme. It was very popular in Finland also. I was teen and learned Spanish because of that show and then the last episode aired and I just stopped practicing Spanish. I felt so devastated. Lo, literally every 30 Yofin I know started Spanish because of this show. But chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Ah. Star Trek. Enterprise A, let's make the last episode a holodeck episode about two characters that aren't even in the show. Then for the coup de grace, we can needlessly kill off someone at random. The second to last episode is a decent finale. Just pretend that's the last episode. Anybody else using this thread to prevent themselves from beginning any of these shows? The Last Man on Earth, awesome show, didn't know they were getting cancelled, left us with a major cliffhanger that was never resolved. To be fair, at least it ended with Tandy saying, Oh, farts. Heroes. The original story was planned for one season. Just watch the first season and pretend the rest didn't happen. Sila was a great villain. Zachary Quinto is a phenomenal actor. I remember really enjoying this show. Then the writer's strike happened. Then I don't even remember what happened to it. Such a shame. The writer's strike also killed off Pushing Daisies, and I'm still sad about that. I really wish the studios didn't have to be forcibly reminded that they're nothing without scripts to produce every couple of years. Dr. Sam Beckett never made it home. Fuck you, Quantum Leap. Pretty Little Liars. I am still so mad at how bad the ending of that show was. The real problem with Pretty Little Liars was none of the girls were nearly interesting enough to warrant stalking from A, Big A, Uber A, and everyone working with the A's. Basically, the whole town was desperate to track these girls' every move, and they just weren't really doing that much outside of worrying who's tracking them. I haven't watched this show, but sounds like all setups and no payoff. The mystery on Paul was never who it was. The mystery was always what happened the night Allison went missing. The second they decided to bring her back from the dead, the show stopped working. The end goal should have always been to fill in the gaps from that night, not find out who was. R was merely an antagonist driving the show. I think it would have been cooler if we never found out about any a team, and the show ended with them finding out who killed Allison once and for all. We have a scene with them leaving the courthouse after the murderer is found guilty. The girls all need to leave for college in the next day, but Spencer says, do we have time for one last thing? And they all go to leave flowers at Allison's grave. They hug and cry and tell her they miss her and they hope they've made her proud. As they all turn to walk away, their phones go off and they all receive one final text. Thank you, bitches. Ah, it would forever have had this air of mystery around who I was with this spooky, maybe it was Allison texting but Alison did come back in the books, though, so that's at least canonical, but the show took some really weird liberties with the source material that made the whole thing pretty awful. I had an amazing theory that Mr. Fitz was A, and it was so good, and then they ruined it by making him like a fakey A, and it really pissed me off. I swear everyone on that show ended up having some involvement as of that, by the ended up having some involvement as of that, by the end, did it really matter who it was? Mr. Fitz being A was the only logical conclusion to that show. And it would have worked even with a fake out of him being A and then not really being A. It would have been brilliant and really worked with the themes of the show. Young girls being pursued by creepy older guys, surveillance culture of teenage girls, etc. But then they just had Aria marry him and made the bad guy a secret evil British twin. I gave like eight years of my life to that show. For that, as an old guy, Anybody else remember Northern Exposure? Remind us how it ends, please. Every so often I look to see if that show is available for viewing. 
I know it's the music royalties. I just keep hoping that maybe someday I can watch it again and start to finish. Got first seven seasons. Houses fighting long wars for years to see who should sit on the Iron Throne. Got season eight last five minutes. How about Bran? Everyone. Okay, Jake. Sansa. The North would be independent representatives from the Iron Islands and Dawn just sit there. But Bran proves his political acumen by immediately giving his only real support total independence without asking anything in return, because his sister said so, like the rest of Westeros is going to go along with that. Also, distance between locations feels significant for the first six or seven seasons. It actually takes a few episodes for someone to make it somewhere else on horseback. By season eight characters are just teleporting across the map. The 100, the whole last season was messed up. Honestly, the reason I stuck with watching the 100 is because it got more and more ridiculous with each season. Just when you thought the character motivations couldn't be any less consistent, they take it up a level. By the end, the writers were almost explicit in how many sharks they were jumping and seemed to revel in it. I loved that show, and it ended just as stupidly as it should have. Killing Evie. The fact that Phoebe Waller Bridge was involved in writing every episode the first two seasons and nothing after that is extremely telling. Edit. As a few people have pointed out, Pew Burnley wrote for the first season, which does still make sense as it's easily the best season. It ended at the bridge for me and three when they chose each other. I'm amazed at Gilmore Girls. A year in the life is not very high on this list. Complete character butchering by a resentful writer who could not write the final season ten years earlier. Don't get me started on the whole episode that was a musical. Awful. I did legit cry when Luke and Lorelai got married. Also, Emily had a lot of good character growth. The rest was such a bummer. Please end Grey's Anatomy before it ends up. I saw someone online say, Grey's Anatomy is one piece for middle-aged white women. <laughs> Those type of comparisons crack me up. Bitcoin is just men for dudebros. Wrestling is just soap operas for hillbillies. But yeah, that show has been going on for way too long. Grey's Anatomy, that is. One Piece is ending soon. Ipas are the pumpkin spice lattes of hipster men. I was like, uh, ha ha ha, you're right. Then I scroll down and there it was, me. Crypto is astrology for Dudebras. It's flabbergasting to see spoilers. The only good end we can hope for is a jump in time. Bailey or Ellis coming to be the next gray generation of the hospital since Zola said she's not interested to be a doc or maybe come as a scientist to do research about Alzheimer. And meeting Sophia, Harriet, Ellis and Alexis, Tuck, otherwise the show would totally be meaningless. People claimed it surpassed his length and so it's a better show, but E. Rise didn't perfectly. Grays didn't. Er had real medicine specialists, on set to be the most real they could, but you can see that those on Grays gave up a long and inning time ago. That's still on the air. And Shonda Rhimes says she has no ending planned for the series. We could already tell. I wouldn't say Lucifer's finale was bullshit, but I wish Chloe and Lucy would have gotten to be a couple more when Chloe was alive but they waited until she died. Anytime people resort to time travel and alternative timelines, it's bullshit. Prophecy, time travel, and adding a kid to the show, usually a baby, but not in this case, are my three least favorite plot devices. They managed to do all three in a season, and I really wish that I could time travel to go back and forget that the last season existed. I will say the Dan episode was great though. As this is an international sub, a lot of you won't be familiar with Line of Duty. A British drama about a police anti-corruption unit who catch corruption unit who catch corrupt officers. It was awesome. Five, I think, series of intricate plot details, gripping twists and action. Then they absolutely ruined it in the final, I believe, sixth series. Basically, everything in the whole show was building up to the big reveal of who had been behind the organized crime group that the heroes were closing in on. The final series ramped this up even further until it turns out to be Jesus. What a waste of time that was. Makes all the time you've invested in it feel wasted, even though you were enjoying most of it. Worse than Game of Thrones, in my opinion. Edit. Tried to mark spoilers, it won't do it. Never mind. The show is a few years old now, and to be honest, if I ruin it before you finished, I'm doing you a solid. Edit again. Being shown the error of my ways and fixed the spoiler markup. Thank you to those who gave me the right info. I mean, 
Game of Thrones definitely shut the bed. The writers admitted to half a sing it, and it really blows to see so many people's work go up in flames because two egomaniacs, because two egomaniacs, beside it the hottest show in the world, was suddenly beneath them. Got to mention how I met your mother as well. We were shown over and over again, Ted and Robin wouldn't work, yet here we are. I really loved the idea of Barney Robin being a happy child. Free couple too. That concept is so rare. They had a setup for something really satisfying and decided not to stay with it. I mean, Game of Thrones definitely shat the bed. The writers admitted to half-assing it and it really blows to see so many people's work go up in flames because two egomaniacs decided the hottest show in the world was suddenly beneath them. I'm so fucking happy those two twats lost a Star Wars movie because of their fuck up with God. Game of Thrones is so hilarious to me because the only time I ever see it mentioned on the internet anymore is in relation to the ending. And since 2020, I don't think I've talked about it to anyone in person. The show was a huge part of our culture for years, and now it's almost like it never existed. That last part is so damn crucial, dude. It was on par with Seinfeld getting a bad finale, except I'd argue that what God did early on was even more impressive than what Seinfeld did. Maybe not more innovative and influential, but still. Gott came along, at a time when the media hum was first turning into a roar. Don't get me wrong, it's a maelstrom now. It managed to be at least as pervasive and magnetic as Seinfeld ever did 35 years ago, when there were 30 channels to choose from. Like for a while there, I didn't know anyone who hadn't at least tried it. Like if they hadn't you, barely had to convince them. They knew that everyone in the world was watching. It was like that Pokemon go summer lull. Anyway, that's what made their dismount so much more. Ick, tragic. It was really the first thing to pull culture together, like that since I would probably say American Idol's first few seasons. It was this beacon of artful entertainment. A modern approach to the water cooler problem. Then bam. They fail spectacularly, bad enough to taint the whole thing. It's like if your running back fumbled at the goal line at the end of the game, so badly that the end of the game so badly that the Reef decided to take all our previous touchdowns away. No one talks about any of the good stuff. No one. For almost a decade, it's all we ever wanted to talk about with each other every Monday morning. Then, over the course of like five weeks, we never wanted to talk about any of it ever again. At least Seinfeld is remembered as a good show, though not a good guy. The finale to Seinfeld was poorly done, but because it was a sitcom, the bad finale didn't change the way that you watch the early episode. Because Got is serialized, it's hard to watch the early seasons that set up great characters and complex personalities, knowing that they're going to be reduced to parodies of themselves in the end. Scrubs ended on a great high note with a goodbye to the main cast and crew, only to be brought back for a final seasons as a crappy spin-off disguised as Scrub. That's because Scrubs Med School was supposed to be a spin-off, but Apps executives decided, in their infinite wisdom, to market it as a new season, instead of a new season, instead of a new spin-off, as originally intended by showrunner Bill Lawrence. I think of the last season of Scrubs as a completely different show. It's decent if watched like that, I think. The last season of Scrubs is an entirely different show. It was a spin-off that kind of flopped and got called season 9 as a result. Merlin. Absolute garbage, on top of season 5 itself being pretty stinky, and I'm still willing to get mad about it 11 years later. Christ, don't get me started. I adored that series, but the fact that we never get to see Arthur and Merlin as Arthur and Merlin pisses me off to no end. Last 10 minutes of the whole damn series is what we get. And Arthur acting like a pissy bitch for nine of them? God damn it. The way the dragon made such a big deal about all Arthur and Merlin had accomplished together, and I'm like, what? What the fuck did they actually accomplish? Yeah, they killed a couple baddies, but by and large magic users were still hated and the status quo had barely budged. I heard that they had originally planned to make the show much longer, but had to cut it short, and sadly, it shows. Promised Neverland. What did they escape from the house, leaving it there? It was a great ending. Too bad they didn't adapt anything after that. Nothing at all. There is no promised Neverland season 2 in Basing Sa Dexter, twice. Let's bring our show back so we can do another ending. But this time, let's wipe away any sense of self-awareness from the main character and have him be basically a raving lunatic by the last few episodes. 
and having caught by a detail that never happened and pile stupid coincidences on top of each other rather than bothering with an ounce of intelligence for any characters. True blood. Honestly, at that point, I was purely watching for Alexander Skarsgård. The books weren't great, but the show really started to go downhill the more they veered from the source material. Like in the books, Suki pretty much has no interest in build past book three and for most of the remainder of the series. Until the last book, it's all about her and Eric, even though she has other boyfriends. The show forced the Bilsuki relationship solely because the actors were a couple. The only good things the show did, compared to the books, was Lafayette creating Jessica, Godric, a bit of the Newlands, and Russell. Lafayette is definitely one of my all-time favorite characters, and Nelson Ellis portrays him wonderfully. Should left supernatural at the living a normal life. Still laughing about super hell though. Seriously? Who comes up with this crap? My friend was telling me to watch this show. He just said it only gets more ridiculous. Apparently the writers kept trying to quit and thought they were getting cancelled, so they kept throwing shit at the wall and, and all of it stuck. I think it's safe to say that power creep became an issue. At a certain point, it's nearly impossible to realistically fight the next big bad. They went from dealing with a demon, to fighting the first demon, to fighting Lucifer, to fighting primordial monsters, to fighting angels, to fighting God's sister, to eventually fighting God. Somewhere along the way, these normal dudes probably stopped being the most effective solution to these problems. Before demons, it was random supernatural monsters and ghosts. Demons were a big deal at one time. Then they became random mooks. It's crazy they were gonna do a spin-off of this show. They had lightning in a bottle, and they did not want to let it go. Edit. They did make the spin-off. Thank you, Reddit. Show was at its best as a monster of the week episodic series. Modern media has become a competition of who can beat their dead horse the hardest. Eek that one episode where lives rent free in my head. It was the heat of the moment. Kripke intended for it to end with season 5, but the cuddle couldn't let their cash cow die. You can tell too. 1, 5 is almost its own show within the show. I've always said it should end it there, because like the apocalypse. The apocalypse. There is literally nothing bigger than the apocalypse. No one here talking about Alf. He finally gets called by his people, and they schedule a time for him to be picked up and taken back to his home planet, and the last few seconds of the series end with the FBI pulling up just as the alien mothership is about to pick off up. Cut to black. I mean, what? Alf. Did he finally eat the cat? I didn't care much for the first X-Files finale, bullet time missile to smoking man's face. What? Penny. Dreadful. Seasons 1 and 2 are phenomenal. I absolutely adore Penny Dreadful, if we're talking about those two seasons. The third season. It had promise, but I'm almost positive Showtime had it cancelled, and so John Logan had to wrap up the story quickly. How I Met Your Mother. Any and all character development was undone. Barney went back to being a womanizer, and Ted, who spent the whole series coming to terms that Robin wasn't right for him, went running back to Robin. Awful finale. That's what gets me. I could handle the ending if it made sense with the character's arcs. But no, they said, let's reset this to how everyone was at the beginning, and it made no sense. I remember reading something about the writers had always intended this, and for the show to wrap up in four or so seasons, I feel like I would have accepted the ending a lot more if they hadn't spent another four seasons reiterating why Teed and Robin don't work. Of how I met your mother. Any and all character development was undone. That was my problem with the finale. I get it, that's the ending they had planned all along and were gonna do it regardless. But they flushed eight or nine seasons worth of character development in the process, and it really rubbed me the wrong way. Also, if you know that that's your ending, then fucking write the show that way. That Roseanne ended so badly. Gotten how I met your mother are the obvious answer. Got ending was so bad that I can't even go back and enjoy the earlier seasons now. Just ruined my enjoyment of the entire franchise. Yeah, the got ending was so bad, it retroactively destroyed the entire series and nearly erased itself from popular culture. That's impressive, honestly, in the worst way. The standard joke is that the ending was so bad, it deleted itself as a cultural icon. The show literally cancelled itself. That's for real, not even a joke. A whole empire of toys and merchandise disintegrated near overnight. 
bargain outlets filled with truckloads of unwanted Jon Snow action figures. People were naming their kids after the characters, and now it's like it never existed. It's a legit cultural tragedy. I am surprised I had to scroll so much to find anyone mentioning how I met your mother. Yay, kids, this wasn't so much me telling you how I met your mother and more, how much I slept around trying to get over your Aunt Robin, and can I please go and bang her, even though her and Uncle Barney just divorced. Should have been called how I met your new mother at that point. Seems people that picked up him in after it finished and binged it, liked the ending, but for the people watching in real time for a decade, they absolutely hate the ending. Dexter, Dexter. Weeds. Weeds. Weeds just got weird and terrible last few seasons. Then, that Genji Kohan did orange is the new black the same way. In fairness, the show started losing its way once they left Agrestic. Those first few seasons were really great though. Star Trek Enterprise had a terrible ending. 13 reasons why. The show didn't need to be extended past season 1 but the last season was complete bullshit. 